Hey Amazon sellers, this is Dimitro from SalesBite, and today I'm joined by Anthony from Data Dive, who's going to show us the amazing tool they are building. Hi Anthony, how are you doing today? What's going on, man? How are you? Happy to be here. Glad we're finally getting a chance to record this. Yeah, yeah, doing great. Thanks. I know uh, we talked before, and uh, you work with Brandon, do a lot of amazing things again with Data Dive. Uh, and with Cape Ecom. So for some people who might not be familiar with you, and like, I know you also do a lot of trainings for data dive, but for people who are not familiar, can you just briefly introduce yourself? Because I know you also worked at another great Amazon tool, uh, PicFu, that we use a lot. And if I'm not mistaken, may maybe I'm wrong, but you worked at Amazon or no? <laughs> Yeah, I've been I've been in the industry since 2016. I started my career at Amazon. Um, I eventually worked there for about a year and then I quit, moved out to the Philippines and uh, helped a guy who actually taught me how to sell on Amazon, helped him build a creative agency called Virtuous Graphics. And uh, we built that agency for two years. We exited in 2019. And then I moved on to a company called PicFu, which is a split testing tool. I grew that company for two years, and then I approached Brandon about joining Seller Systems. I really, my my real passion and love is making educational content, making things that are really easy for people to understand. And uh, he was like, yeah, you can join Seller Systems, but do you know I've got this tool called Data Dive? And I, I had used it before, but I didn't realize Brandon owned it. So I kind of split my time. I've been working here for about two years now, split my time between Data Dive, Seller Systems, and then our conference that we do in January called Camp Ecom. Yeah, that sounds great, man. Um, so yeah, Data Dive. Um, we've been using it like since almost day one when it was still like in the spreadsheets. So yeah, our team really loves it. But for someone uh, who are not very familiar with it, can you explain like who is it exactly for and like what's the main purpose of it? Yeah, so Data Dive is a pretty unique software tool. A lot of people try to group it into other software tools that are used for product research. Uh, the thing that you should remember about Data Dive, though, is what we're really trying to do is look at every piece of work that you have to do in running an Amazon business. And all we're trying to do is say, how do we make this go faster? How do we speed up that workflow? So when it comes to Data Dive, there's really three main applications. You're either validating products that you're considering launching. Then if those products pass validation, you're moving on and you're launching them. And then once those brands are live on Amazon, you're using Data Dive to optimize those products. So it's basically all three of those things. Uh, it's just going to help you do that faster. So validating products faster, launching products faster, optimizing products faster. And we even have an enterprise uh, side of the tool that everyone can use. And so if you're a brand owner or you're a larger company, an aggregator, an agency, and you're managing client work, it's going to help you manage validation, launch, and optimizing uh, everything. It's just going to help you do it a lot faster. Yeah, that's a great summary. And yeah, like from my personal load, like note a lot of things that we used to do that would take us maybe like a full day, couple of hours, especially with like product research and all of that. Yeah, it can be really done super quickly and efficiently with data dive. So yeah, it eliminates uh, a lot of like this brain process processing and just, you know, staring at the monitor, looking through different products, comparing them and all of that and building those lists, you know, of products and keywords. So yeah, that's really great. So, okay, can you... I guess kind of make uh, a quick tutorial. Let's say we just signed up with Data Dive and we want to research uh, some products. Where where do we even start? Yeah, so I'll I'll just go through and do the whole workflow and show you some different parts of the tool. Everything is going to start in Amazon. So I'm just going to pick a product so that we're not going to burn anyone's product. I'm just going to pick a garlic press. I think we're all pretty familiar with it. And you'll get some insights here into all three of those uh, phases that Data Dive, all three of those workflows that Data Dive is going to be helpful with. So validating, launching, and optimizing. So first thing that you're going to do is you're going to see your dive. So you're going to try to select 15 plus relevant competitors. These are non-sponsored results, people who are showing up in the top organic positions. 
And for this, I'm just going to try to get things that are, are really a traditional garlic press. So I'm not going to get any of these garlic rockers. I'm really just going to try to get uh, a traditional garlic press and grab about 15 of these, skipping any of the sponsored results. And what Data Dive is going to do is it's going to tell me exactly where these sellers are getting their sales from, from which keywords. And then I'm, I'll pick one of these brands and pretend it's mine. I'll probably pick like this KitchenAid and uh, we'll see what we can do from an optimization standpoint. I'll show you how it, how it would look if we launched the product. So I've selected my competitors. I've already got 16. I'm going to get like another five. Let's see. Okay. So I've got 22 now. I'm just going to create a new niche and I'm going to call this garlic press and I'm going to call this December or November 29, just because I've got a bunch of these. And then I'm going to click dive. So this is one of the more time intensive parts about data dive is just starting your dive. The good news is once you have started your dive, you don't need to replicate any of this work. So right now, Data Dive is pulling in all of this information, all of this data. We source our data from Jungle Scout. And so we don't use the, the consumer version. We have specialized data from their Cobalt program. So we find that it's actually quite accurate. Uh, we did a test back in the day. We used to use Helium 10's data. And uh, we, did, we did a whole test before we switched our data source and found that the Jungle Scout data was more accurate and gave us more keywords. So we've been using it for more than a year now. And I think people have really gotten used to it and the, the data is actually quite accurate. So I'm here, the first place that Data Dive is gonna take you is to what's called the master keyword list. And I like to start off by sorting the search volumes that the largest search volume keywords are up here at the top. And one of the most important things we're gonna need to do before we can start analyzing this data is to clean the master keyword list. So we want to remove any branded search terms and we want to remove any keywords that aren't relevant. So this is still a pretty manual process, but we can speed it up using this B button. It's going to detect any of the brand names it sees up here. And so I can pretty quickly remove those keywords from the master keyword list. And then I'm just going to do another quick glance just to see, is there anything else like Gracula? I know that's a brand name. So I can type that in here and see there's three keywords with Gracula in it. I can pull those out. And what I want to really be sure of is when I finish cleaning this master keyword list, like, I don't know if garlic zoom, that might be a brand vampire garlic crusher. That's not going to be relevant. We've got some Spanish translations. Garlic cooker is not going to be relevant. Best garlic press is a little general, but I'll leave it in there. Uh, Rossley, I think is a brand name. I'm not going to be selling an electric garlic press, so I'm going to leave that out. Garlic Vampire, Dracula, these are for that other brand name. Um, Ginger Mincer, I think this would work. Zule is a brand name. Uh, this, this Cine Star, and then Next Trend. So I'm just going to remove these. I think I'm getting pretty close to a clean master keyword list. It's certainly going to be, I can see Pampered Chef here as well. Got another Dracula. So why do exactly we want to exclude the brand names? So just people understand. Yeah, good question. So with the when we're looking at the MKL, the master keyword list, we want this to be a complete list of the most important keywords that are driving sales for this niche. So you can see here we've got 49 keywords. These are keywords that are going to be essential to uh, ranking well overall for this product. When it comes to branded keywords, we can't put these inside of our listing. So the MKL, we're really looking at what can we try to optimize from an organic perspective? What can we put in our listing and hopefully improve our rank through getting better performance? Now for branded search terms, you can run PPC campaigns to those, but you can't put these keywords in your listing. And so that's why for the MKL, we're going to eliminate anything that we wouldn't normally put in our listing. So keywords that aren't relevant, we're not going to put in our listing. We're not going to put a garlic cooker in here, but we might run PPC traffic to garlic cooker if it helps us get sales for this garlic press. We might run PPC ads to OXO or Zule Kitchen, but we're not going to be able to put these keywords in our listing. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. So people should spend just a little bit extra time because some brand names, they might not be very familiar and you want to avoid putting those anywhere in your listing so you don't get uh, banned by Amazon. Exactly. So right now we're, we've got a clean master keyword list. Before I start going into the what would be optimization uh, I do want to show a little bit of how we would do product validation very quickly using data dive. And, and so what I can do is I can come over here to this overview tab and it gives us some great metrics that we can start getting an idea of how big is the niche in terms of sales? What's the price point people are selling at? How competitive is it from a review standpoint? I can see a breakdown of country information here. What I really like to look at in terms of how competitive a niche is are these two charts right here. And so I'm gonna go back over to the master keyword list real quick just to show this. But the, the whole basis of how Datadive operates is all based on the concept of this metric here. This is the percentage of keywords out of the keywords in the master keyword list that this seller is indexed, is ranked on page one for. So that's within the top 45 positions. So what this is telling me is out of the 49 keywords here, this brand Zule Kitchen is ranked on page one for 100% of the keywords in this master keyword list. This brand is ranked for 94%, 89%. And I have to go over pretty far on the right-hand side before I start seeing sellers that are indexed for a lower percentage. In fact, this one here, Haramware is the lowest. They're only ranked on page one for 23% of the search volume. So here in the overview tab, we give you a really good breakdown of this. We're saying that for the 22 competitors that we've included in this niche, the average search competition strength is 91%. And in fact, there's 14 sellers in this niche that are ranked on page one for more than 80% of the search volume. Anyone who's 80% plus is very strong. Anyone who's strong is 60 plus percent. This is 40 plus percent. And then this very weak is 20 plus percent. So before doing any additional work in terms of validating this product, and I don't think anyone really needs to hear this because you know you shouldn't sell a garlic press. Obviously this is saturated, but this is what's cool about data dive. I don't have to like go with my gut or uh, try to mince together a bunch of different data points. I can just see here right now that unless I'm ready to start playing for maybe 14th to 20th place in this niche, there's probably it's probably not a good idea to launch a garlic press. On top of that, I can see very quickly just from these charts that almost all of the search volume comes down to two keywords, garlic press and garlic mincer. And then there's a massive drop off after that. I can see you know, some seasonal trends here, but these are the things that I'm really looking at to say this is going to be a really competitive niche. I'm not going to show it right now because we want to keep moving in this demo, but uh, we have a whole other tool in here for validation where we have this product scorecard where you answer these different questions and then by the end you get a score, positive or negative. And this is gonna help you determine the higher positive a score is, the lower risk of product and the larger negative a score is, the higher risk of product. And I've filled it out for this garlic press before. You're gonna get like a minus 600, a minus 700 versus other product opportunities, you're gonna get a positive score. And those are gonna be the products that if you're a new seller, uh, they're going to be lower risk to launch. So I'm not going to go into any more on validation. Let's go back into the master keyword list and uh, we can start to get an idea of like what it would like to what it would be like to launch and optimize these products. So we already showed you this metric here. This is the percentage of search volume that a seller is ranked on page one. Here you're seeing that same breakdown that we saw in the overview. It's just a little bit smaller to let us know we've got 14 sellers that are very strong. That's 80 plus percent. But let's say we wanted to go and uh, launch a garlic press into this niche. We know that it's risky. We know it's going to be a large budget required to launch. Um, how quickly could we set up a listing and then theoretically launch this product and get information about this product? So pending that we have a clean master keyword list, uh, one of the first things I could do, you're going to need to launch a product is you're going to need to go into the listing builder. I'm going to take a look at the image galleries, and then I'm also going to show you one of our AI tools, which is the AI product brief. So I'm actually going to start with this AI product brief first, because it takes about five to 10 minutes to run in the background. 
But essentially, all I have to do is select, I can select up to 10 competitors. And then what this tool is going to do, I like to choose the very strong ones, but I'm also going to get these because KitchenAid is just not great at Amazon. Um, anyway, I've just selected these 10 competitors. I'm going to let this run in the background. And what it's going to do is it's going to read all of the reviews uh, for these 10 products. And it's going to tell me what do customers like? What do they dislike? How can I improve the product? And then what are my customer avatars? So if I'm launching this product, this is going to be pretty helpful for product development. And then as I'm doing my creative, as I'm doing my images for this product. So we'll let that run in the background. I'm going to show you how quickly it would be to write a title, bullets, and description using uh, Data Dive. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on, I'm not going to get into this whole breakdown right now. We'll talk about this when we talk about optimization, but we have this really cool metric called ranking juice, which is the ranking potential. It's a score that we calculate for the ranking potential of a listing. So you can see here, it'll tell you where you are for title, for bullets and description. Right now though, I'm just gonna click a few buttons and I'm gonna build out a high ranking juice title and then a high ranking juice bullets and description uh, all using our automation. So we have the master keyword list. Data Dive knows what are the most important keywords and keyword roots. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is click this. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna fill up to 60% of my title with the most important keyword roots. We'll filter by search volume up here. It's gonna put in the most important keyword roots, kind of keyword stuffing the title. Now you might be looking at this and saying like, okay, well, this isn't that great of a title. The point is, is that it's covering the most important keyword roots. It's giving you a lot of ranking juice. You can see from my title, I'm in number the first spot and I still have about a hundred characters to play with to make this more readable. So if I want to do my brand name, Anthony's um, Anthony's Kitchen, <laughs> kind of a lame brand name. Maybe I'll, I'd make that a little bit shorter. It'd be like A Swag, <laughs> A Swag Tools. Yeah, that's it. That's the brand name we're looking for. And then I'm going to add in like some dashes here. Oops. It's going to just like recalculate some of those. I'm not going to spend much time on this. I'm just trying to show you how quick it is. There's a lot of keyword stuff in here. So maybe I'd try to break this up and I'd say like, um, I think we already have stainless steel, but I could like put some colors in here. It like comes in like silver or black, you know, whatever you want to do to break it up. And now it's looking a little bit more readable. Now you're looking at that and you're saying, okay, you've got your brand name. Uh, you're getting a lot of ranking juice. That's great. But what do you do about the bullets and description? Well, here I can actually just click on this AI copywriter button and here it's not going to keyword stuff my bullets in description. It's actually going to take the remaining keywords and keyword roots, and it's going to incorporate those into the bullets in description, but it's going to do it in a natural language uh, sounding way. It kind of leverages chat GPT, but the inputs are what make this really good because it's actually choosing the most important keyword roots. So we're going to let this go for another minute. And you can see here, right, it's built me bullets. It's built me a description. And you can see here for bullets, it's not perfect. I still want to do a little bit more, but I'm at seventh place for the bullets. And then I'm at 13th place for the description. And I'll just show you real quick how you can modify these templates. If I click here to AI bullets, it's very simple, but it's just saying, hey, we're going to use, and I can click, uh, you know, choose different keywords here and then click generate. You can just see here, it's saying, I'm going to make you a bullet based on this keyword, this keyword, this keyword. And uh, I'm just going to let this load for a second, just so you can get an idea for how the tool works. Yeah, this is really great because, you know, professional Amazon copywriter can charge like a couple hundred bucks per product. And <laughs> here you have all the necessary keywords. Uh, just, you know, you might want to put a little bit more thought into it. Yeah, so exactly right. And you can see down here exactly like, here's your input keywords. Here's what the copywriter did. Here's what your ranking juice is per bullet. So I could look at this and say, mm, you know what? I don't want to use this ginger press ginger tool. I can remove these. I can add in my own keywords here and I can just keep generating new versions and click use and listing. So again, this is just, this is just the starting point of where this stuff is going to get in the future. It's going to get better and better over time. So let's go over here and see my product brief. It looks like it is completed. 
So if I was launching this product, I already have a pretty good listing. I'd want to spend a little bit more time, obviously, cleaning it up and checking the AI's work. But now what else would I need to launch this product, right? I'm going to need most likely uh, some images. I'm going to do some product development. So you can see my AI uh, product brief has gone in the background and it's showed me here's the most important attributes that are included in the listing. I can move on here to see what customers like. I can see what customers dislike about the product. I can see value added ideas. So these are ways to improve the product. So it's saying like enhanced garlic uh, extraction, efficient garlic crushing, and it's giving me some more detail here, easy cleaning, durable construction. So whether I'm gonna develop the product in this way, or these are things that I wanna incorporate in my images or in my video or in my PPC, um, it's giving me all of this here. What I really like the most though is this section at the bottom for customer avatars. So I like to use this when I'm creating my images and say, okay, I'm gonna see if I can make my images. I'm gonna talk about the garlic press and how smooth it is, how easy it is, easy to clean. But now I'm gonna to try to incorporate these scenes, these avatars, these situations uh, into my image gallery so that when someone sees this product, it clicks for them. And I'm gonna try to make this like the busy professional chef or the uh, health conscious home cook, right? And you can see these are, you know, it's like they love eating garlic, but it's kind of a pain to use. They want a product that's made of high quality material, dishwasher safe, the elderly home cook, the sustainable cook. So we're getting some good ideas here. Again, this just ran in the background and it's getting us some pretty good information. So the last thing I would do when I wrap up, um, a lot of people really love this tool. This is one of my favorite areas about data dive is called deep dive. And so again, before I make my images, I just wanna do a quick glance at this. I can see sales, I can see Keepa charts, I can see variation information. But what I like is go to the collapsed all view and I can see all the image galleries all in one spot. So I can get a quick idea for like, what's everyone doing for their main image, right? Here's the product, your accessories, it's showing my color variations on the right. I can see what are people doing for their images, right? Here is like an easy to use, multiple chambers, easy to wash. Here's a different version of an easy to wash. And so I can compare apples to apples and say, for the people that are very strong, what types of images are they using? What is the order of images they're using? What is the style? How can I take that information and apply that to my own image gallery so that my images are gonna look solid versus if I come down here to this person in green, very boring main image, looks not nearly as high quality of a photo or infographic, like compare this sizing graphic to something that you see up here. So you can see what are the people who are doing well, what contributes to them converting at a high rate, performing at a high rate. Um, so there I'd have my listing, I have my images, some ideas for product development. I'm well on my way to launching this product. Obviously it didn't do everything for me. The thing to keep in mind is this is just gonna get better and better over time. So let's say you validated this product, you launched this product on Amazon. I guess one more thing we need to launch, I'll show you just how to do this very quick, is PPC, right? You can't launch without PPC. If you do, you're gonna do terrible. Exactly. So I'll show you how quickly it would be to set up a launch PPC campaign. I just come here to the PPC keywords tab. I click import MKL. It's gonna take a minute. It's gonna pull in all of the keywords that are in my MKL, as well as the products for product targeting campaigns. I can add on any keywords I want here to the bottom of the list. And then once I've done that, I just gotta refresh this page because I don't think that import was there yet. So this is literally as, this is as fast as it's gonna get to set up PPC campaigns. All I do is I come here to PPC campaigns for launch. I click on my major keyword routes. So here, two or more keywords, that's a unique way to describe the product. We still have Pampered Chef here. It should have been removed, but that's okay. That's illegal already. Stainless steel, garlic pressure. So I've only included a few of these so far, but I've got six routes that I've selected. I could keep going on this list. And then here I can set up my parameters for the campaign, when it's gonna start, what I want my bidding strategy to be, um, how much I wanna apply in terms of the budget. And then like magic, Data Dive has built me nine campaigns covering 19 keywords with 1.6 million in search volume. I can see the individual campaigns here. It's automatically grouping keywords together by search volume so that you don't have like super large keywords next to super small keywords. So you're not gonna eat up all the impressions. 
And then after I've connected my PPC account, I can either send this directly to Amazon or I can generate a bulk sheet and then I can uh, upload that manually to, you know, to the platform. So at this point, we've uh, we've launched the product. Now let's go back and say, okay, one of these products is ours. What would we do to optimize it? And I know we're at 26 minutes. Is it okay if we go a few minutes over 30? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, cool. So we've launched this product. Let's just assume that we've launched it. I'm going to pick one of these products and I'm going to see what could we do to make this better. And one of my favorites in this niche, I've seen this many times, is KitchenAid. So if anyone out there knows KitchenAid or you're the person responsible for this brand, hit us up because we can make you a lot of money very, very, very fast just with a few basic changes. And so why am I saying that KitchenAid has some room for improvement? Well, because they're a major brand in the US, but it's very clear that they just do not focus on their Amazon strategy. And so when it's coming to domination and success on Amazon, the biggest thing that I'm looking for is this metric here your percentage of keywords on page one that you're indexed for, and we want you to be in the highest position as possible. So if we have garlic press with 228,000 monthly searches, would we rather be in position 10 or would we rather be in position two? And the same thing goes all the way down this list. If we show up in a higher position, especially if we have a big brand name, we're gonna make a lot more money here. So in order to start optimizing this brand for KitchenAid, I mean, look at this. They're only making $16,000 a month of revenue versus the biggest uh, product in this brand, Zule, is making $300,000 a month of revenue just for this product. So KitchenAid could be doing a lot better with some very simple changes. And so one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to identify where are the gaps in their master keyword list. And by gaps, I'm saying where are areas in their listing that they're not ranked as high as they should be? Anytime you see where it's blank and green like this, it means that they're indexed out of the top 101 positions, basically not showing up at all for this keyword. So what I can do is I can go over to the listing builder very quick. And I think I've seen this before. Let me come and find their title here. Here we go all the way at the bottom, we're at 668,000. They're in position 20 for ranking juice compared to people up at the top with uh, A-Swag now at the top with 1.1 million. But uh, I'll just grab their title. I'm gonna paste it in here. And look, there's no question as to why KitchenAid is not indexed for more keywords. All they have in their title right now is garlic press and that's it. Nobody's searching for cobalt blue. No one's searching for classic garlic press and very few people are searching for the brand name, no one's searching for the sizing. So if I wanted to start doing some very quick work in terms of like, okay, we've got a gap here, we've got a gap here, all I'd start doing is I would just look at the roots tab and I wanna keep some of their title, but I'm just gonna look at the most important keyword roots and I'm just gonna start putting these in as exact matches in their title here. And you're gonna see how the ranking juice goes up. So we've got garlic press. I can even keep that in there. I would try to put these new terms a little bit earlier on. We've got garlic peeler. And these are all relevant keywords. People search for these and ultimately do buy, they search for a garlic crusher and they do ultimately buy a garlic press. Just different ways to call a garlic press. Uh, mincer tool is a little general. Let's go with garlic tool. And you can see here, just with a little bit of work, <clears throat> my ranking juice for KitchenAid has now gone from 20th place to being in second position, and I've only added on a few extra keywords. If I was from KitchenAid and I'm like, look, I don't want to keyword stuff my title that much. That's like way too much going on. It's not good for our brand. It's not good for our look. No problem, KitchenAid. Let's just start you off instead. One keyword at a time. Oopsies. One keyword at a time. This listing's been around for a while. I'm still now going from, I just, just close it out, but I'm, I'm still going from position 20 to position 13. You let this title stay for a little bit, you get indexed for garlic mincer, and then you go back and you say, okay, I'm going to switch things up. And now I'm going to add in a different keyword. It's totally up to them. This would be very, very easy to do. The other thing, if I was optimizing this brand is I would take a real hard look at deep dive. And I know we talked about this earlier, but look at the images that we have here for Zule Kitchen. This would be so easy for KitchenAid to replicate. But when I come down here and look at the listing for KitchenAid, what do we got? Like this is their main image. This is image position two, image position three. 
So someone on their brand team could literally just say, okay, we've got our product. And then from doing an analysis of the top competitors in this niche, like what types of graphics do we need? Well, we need a main image that shows the product. If we don't have any color variations, that's fine, but let's at least put this product in use, have some garlic coming out of it, maybe show the packaging if we have packaging. And then what else do we need to have? Like we need to have a sizing graphic. If we put it on a table and next to some fruits for some scale, we say that it's sturdy, uh, sturdy. we need to have a washing graphic. Their team could go in even without doing a photography shoot. Like they could just put on some text, get their graphic designer, go to mid journey. And within a day, they could have something that's going to get way more clicks, get way more conversions, and then get indexed from an SEO standpoint, just from maximizing ranking juice and their title bullets and description. So that is a very quick run through on optimization. The last thing, which is the logical thing to wrap up with is going to be rank radar. So let's say that this KitchenAid brand is the one that I'm working on. I'm just going to see if I can copy this ace in here. Let's see. So let's say you were KitchenAid and you made those changes. I would hope they would be a little bit more aggressive uh, in their listing changes, but maybe they would only want to track one keyword at a time uh, or change one keyword at a time in their title. That would be fine. All I got to do is like they make the changes, they change their image gallery. Now we can actually see, or if there's an agency out there that wants to contact KitchenAid and do the work for free and maybe get a percentage of the uplift in sales, this is how I would do it is I drop this product in here. I want to track my results. I'm going to type in uh, November 29th. Let's see. Here's my the MKL for this product. My marketplace is the US. And then I'm going to click start tracking. And so what this is going to do is it's automatically going to track all of the keywords for this niche. I've got 500 keywords that I'm tracking right now. Um, and then right now you're going to see that we've only been tracking for one day. Most of these keywords were not indexed at all for. Um, if you wanted to, I'm just going to show you some other parts of the tool. You, you, you don't have to track all 500 keywords. Like, for example, there's still some brand names in here. Uh, like, uh, anyway, I'm just trying to show you that you can pause keywords and you can remove them from this list. I'll show you a rank radar that I've been tracking for a while and it's a little bit more cleaned up. So this is like this indoor cat tree. And you, you can see I've been tracking this for quite a while. I've uh, I've paused the vast majority of keywords. So I'm not tracking all 500 keywords. I'm only tracking 441. I can see I'm only tracking 56 keywords. And then the other thing that I want to show you is like, let's say for this uh, KitchenAid product, I added in garlic mincer and I just want to see how they're doing on garlic mincer. What I can do is I can actually come here and make a highlight. So I can click on this little button click highlight, and then I can say like uh, added uh, indoor cats to title. And I say, I'm going to look at this over the next week. So going from the 29th until the 6th, and I can add. And then so now I can look here and see added this to the title, PPC bid increase. And so I think you could get an idea for how I could start tracking this uh, automatically using data dive using the keyword rank tracker. So I think that might just be about everything. There's a couple other things inside of the tool. I'm not going to really get into them now, but I think that's a pretty comprehensive uh, run through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you covered all the essentials. And <laughs> yeah, you gave me actually a good idea. I think I should uh, go and pitch uh, KitchenAid, our agency services, <laughs> because yeah, that's something we help brands obviously using data dive because we can easily spot those gaps but yeah man uh yeah you did a really great job with uh presenting data dive tools and obviously it was a quick overview and for users there is actually like a library of detailed sops and even more videos from you um that you know will help you to learn about the tool because yeah it covers the essentials from like uh, product research to launching it and like you showed uh, spotting those uh, customer avatars and then what people like and don't like because yeah if you can manufacture a product with those insights with some uh, better things that no one else covers in the market and then aim it at the right avatar at the right group with visual content, with uh, copy, you will nail it. And then plus keep optimizing um, your product. 
so yeah <clears throat> i think uh this was great man um for uh anyone who's interested in data dive i have a special uh discount i think it's uh 50 monthly off uh for uh for the rest of uh, their life uh uh, when you're using the tool, I think the pricing changed a little bit. Now it's kind of based on the usage of different tools, but you get you get the discount anyway, uh, 50 bucks off. So yeah, it will be down below. And yeah, anything uh, anything else you want to mention? Yeah, I'll just say that like anyone who's interested, de definitely use the code. I believe it's for 20% off. So on the standard plan, it's a little bit more, I think, than 50 bucks. Uh, something around that range. It's all consumption-based pricing, so you only pay for what you use. If you want to start off just as a beginner and just do a couple dives in a month, the cheapest plans start at 30 USD, so it's pretty reasonable. Uh, I will say when you start using Data Dive, there is a learning curve. It's going to take you some time to learn it, but we do have some cool support that you can get. Uh, one of them is office hours, so we do three sessions a week. You can just come to this page and you can register for up to three sessions a week. It's totally free. You don't need to be a user uh, as well as if you want to book a demo call, like you're selling already or you're thinking about selling, one of our coaches will walk you through how to use the tool. Again, you don't need to be a user to sign up for a demo call. Um, we also have our YouTube channel. So there's some really helpful videos that'll walk through. This was very quick, but it'll give you a more detailed walkthrough for uh, how to, you know, how to use the tool. And then we also have this help center. So you can come here and look at all of the essential articles we've got advanced SOPs from Escala. They put together four really detailed SOPs. Uh, we've got written guides that explain everything. So between that, we've got about everything you need to get started on using the tool. And yeah, I mean, like use it quick because as time goes on, it's going to get more and more automated. And, you know, some of these things like KitchenAid eventually is going to figure this out or you're going to come in and do it for their brand. Eventually, everyone's going to figure this out and software tools like this are going to really level the playing field for a lot of sellers. So use it while you can. Yeah. Yeah. And one uh, thing I want to add from my personal experience is uh, support is helpful. So every time I open a ticket, they get back to me quickly with like detailed answers about any questions and suggestions. So yeah, that's another great thing. So okay. yeah, I guess that's it then. Thank you so much, Anthony. It was a really great presentation. Um, really amazing tool you're building there. So for anyone interested, again, all the links will be down below. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.